911 screams of horror. Some people broke into our house. A family of three, each with a gun to their head. They were screaming, where's the money? Where's the money? A petrified daughter, tortured, forced to listen as her parents are shot in cold blood. I heard shots like pop. Is it a home invasion? It wasn't a fake home invasion. Those people were in the house searching for money. Or the ultimate betrayal. What a classic tragedy this yes, is. Yes, it's, it's stranger than fiction. The real-life horror story that happened inside the Pan family's home shattered the serenity of their normally quiet, upscale neighborhood. Can you tell me just a little bit about the Pan family? Well, in many ways, this is an immigrant's tale. The Pans were the epitome of an immigrant success story. Han Pan and his wife, Bic, were Vietnamese boat people who escaped to find a better life. What did they do for a living? He was a tool and die maker. His wife worked in the same factory as him, putting together car parts. But he was very intent on his children doing better than he did. And the Pan children were, by all accounts, nearly perfect. Felix was away studying mechanical engineering at a prestigious university. Han wanted his son to design cars, not assemble them. And daughter Jennifer was an Olympic caliber figure skater, an award-winning pianist, and a straight-A student. His daughter, he wanted to be a doctor, eventually changing that to a pharmacist because he said that she didn't have the stomach for it. The Pans led a very disciplined and frugal life, but lived in a nice house and drove two luxury cars. Cops believe those pricey possessions may have been what lured the three gun-toting thugs into their home that horrible night. On this home security camera across the street, you can actually see the gunman in front of the house. You can see three shadowy figures come into the house together. What did they say when they walked in? That they asked for money. It's the beginning of what Detective Bill Curtis describes as 18 minutes of sheer terror. Assailants come in? Yes. And where do they go and who do they tie up first? So initially, uh, they confront Beak in the living room area. Han wakes up to a muzzle pressed firmly to his forehead. One goes upstairs uh, and actually roasts uh, Han Pan out of bed, and he's taken downstairs. Jennifer tells police she was in her room upstairs talking on the phone when she hears something strange outside her door. She heard footsteps. Yes, not to be her parents. Somehow she identified that as not being her parents. Good ears. Yes. Jennifer peeks out the door to find a pistol pointed directly at her. There were guns to everyone's back. They were screaming, where's the money? It was a horrific time. A gunman ties Jennifer's hands behind her back with a shoelace and drags her from room to room and ransacks the house. And how many assailants did she claim were in there? Three. How'd she describe them? They were all uh, male black. Jennifer hands over $2,500 she had saved from teaching piano and another $1,100 her mother had hidden in a nightstand. But it's not enough. Han Pan explained that he didn't have any money or certainly not large quantities of money. One assailant pistol whips Han across the back of his head. A robber then takes Jennifer back to the second floor and ties her to the banister. How was she bound? So her hands were behind her back and then uh, they were tied to the banister. The gunman downstairs suddenly shoves Bic and Han to the basement. He orders them to turn around and throws a blanket over their heads. Bic's final words are pleas for the gunman to spare Jennifer's life. Then, five gunshots pierce the night. Moments later, that grainy security video shows the killers taking off. For some reason, they spare Jennifer's life, and she dials 911. What's your name? My name is Jennifer. So it just broke in? So it broke in, and I heard shots like pop. I don't know what's happening. I'm tied upstairs. Did it sound like gunshots? 
I don't know what that does sounds like. I deserve a pop. Then 34 seconds into the call, something unexpected. <laughs> On the 911 call, you hear someone else screaming. Yes. That's, that's Han Pan. Han Pan somehow survives what was meant to be his execution. Do you think your mom is downstairs too? I don't see her anymore. Tragically, Han finds his beloved wife dead at his feet. Where was she shot? She was shot uh, multiple times uh, in the back, and then ultimately the fatal shot was to the back of the head. Please, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. That's what police wanted to know, too. When they get to the house, they find Jennifer tied up exactly the way she described. That raises more than a few eyebrows. She's telling the 911 operator that she is tied to the banister, but she's also making the call on her cell phone. Right. Up next. Put this in the side that you believe it was in. Do cops catch Jennifer in a lie? So now how can you get to the phone? Or will she be able to wiggle out of it?